Ah, that music. There's few gamers of my generation who don't get a shiver down the spine and a tinge of nostalgia when discussing the 1991 arcade smash Street Fighter 2 by Capcom. It blew away all competition and kickstarted a whole new genre in gaming, the one on one beat em up. And while it would produce a number of sequels and a whole slew of revisions in the shape of Turbo, Championship Edition, and Super, for this video I'm going to be looking at the lasting influence of the original only. Now Capcom, who had been in the arcade business for a number of years, had just come off the back of the success of Final Fight, in which they had taken the formula of Double Dragon and perfected it. It was while developing Final Fight that the decision was made to have another crack at the one on one beat em up. The 1987 release of the original Street Fighter, while popular, had missed the mark with its pressure sensitive buttons. This time, however, Capcom would give gamers six buttons, three punches, and three kicks of varying speed and power, a combo system to separate the novice from the master, and arguably the greatest roster of characters ever seen in a video game. Returning from the first title would be series mainstay Ryu and best mate stroke rival Kem. Also the last boss of part 1, Sagat, would be one of the four final bosses in 2, and the only one of them who didn't suffer a name switch. Now I didn't play a lot of arcades when I was younger, but still remember like it was only yesterday, seeing Street Fighter 2 in action for the first time and getting a glimpse of what all the fuss was about. Actually playing the game was a different story though, as crowds gathered to watch skillful players test their mettle against others and all comers. Winner stays on was the cry, and I could only watch, hoping to pick up some moves or strategy for when, if ever, I could get to play. But Street Fighter 2 may have been a revolution in gaming, bringing a renaissance of sorts to the arcade scene, but it wasn't the only thing making waves at this time. The first shots had been fired in the 16-bit console wars, as the Sega Mega Drive, now known as Genesis, and the Super Nintendo had been released in America, and gaming magazines here in the UK had been reviewing Japanese and US games for both in preparation for the European showdown between the two machines. And while Sega got out of the traps first, all any kid in every playground seemed to care about was that Street Fighter 2 was coming to console. And as a master system owning Sega fanboy of mere cult-like proportions, to discover that the game that I had made it a mission in life to master was only going to be on a Nintendo made my blood run cold. But even this was not going to stop me from fulfilling my destiny. Because for once in my life, Lady Luck would shine her bosom in my direction, as a friend of mine who lived not too far from me would get a copy of Street Fighter 2 shortly after its UK launch, and like the arcade version, seeing it run on a home console was a sight that would forever etch itself into my soul. As was my first match, a two round drubbing, in which I suffered my first defeat, with a perfect I might add. But over the coming days and weeks, I, along with other friends from school, would go to his house and play the game non-stop. And I went from being his whipping boy to his equal, and finally his conqueror. And while it would be Street Fighter 2 Turbo that I would eventually truly master, and I don't exaggerate when I say this, become undefeatable at, but remembering playing the original with my friends after school, or sometimes when his mum was out when we were supposed to be in school, are some of my fondest memories when it comes to gaming. But that's enough about my own experiences with the game. What do I think the legacy of this game is? Well for me, in creating the genre of the fighting game, it set in motion the development of some of my all time favourite games. From World Heroes, Art of Fighting, Samurai Showdown, Eternal Champions, right up to Guilty Gear or Darkstalkers. And even the 3D fighters, Toshinden, Tekken, Dead or Alive, the list is almost endless. 
Although I did find it ironic that the biggest threat Street Fighter 2 ever faced to its crown would come from a game that lacked much of the content of any SNK title, Mortal Kombat. Sure, pulling off the finishing moves was a surefire way to impress your friends and embarrass your enemies, but other than that and the bit of gore it had, I never saw it as a genuine contender. And on that note, I'll bring this video to a close. It's been fun revisiting this old game and putting my thoughts and memories together in a video that I hope entertained, and maybe stirred a nostalgic twinge in one or two of you. So my name's Grey, this has been Consultronics. Please like, share, comment, and if you haven't already, subscribe. I'll have more videos up soon, so I'll see you then. Thanks for watching, and goodbye.